the equanimity um, that you described as um, uh, coming through in uh, fourth jhana and the equanimity that's described as the step before disenchantment. Um, what's the difference between those? Because obviously the equanimity of fourth jhana develops earlier in the practice compared to the equanimity later. Okay, first of all, let's not get confused about fourth jhana because the this is this is the confusion that happens sometimes, you know, because we're living, we live, uh, we kind of laugh about this because we're living in an eight jhana, um, an eight jhana, wait a minute. We're living in an eight jhana place and, and the monks are talking about a four jhana place. So what was that about? So actually the development chart, it goes like this. And you have um, one, two, three, four, and we see it as five, six, seven, and eight as infinite space, infinite consciousness, nothingness, and neither perception or non-perception. And now I'm going to mess up here, but okay, there. <laughs> that was really fun. <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, I got to go back here, sister. Okay. This is what we're dealing, we're living with now, but when they were living in the time of the Buddha and they were writing the text, they were living like this. And then, okay, one, two, three, four, and then it went like this. So it was one, two, three, four and then the subcomponents of the fourth jhana were infinite space infinite consciousness neither no, nothingness and the funny show-off guy neither perception nor non-perception and then you fell into cessation they didn't even talk about cessation as a state they talked about it as a destination but not a state okay uh, but but um, so when we're talking about equanimity, this is we're really talking about. They say equanimity came in the fourth jhana. If you see that stated, that means it arrived. It arrived in a definitive way. It arrived. So it's very likely that when the components of the first three jhanas have not fallen away to go into the fourth jhana yet. You know how there's certain parts come and certain parts go away in the chart, okay? Well, if those these pieces have not fallen away, the person doesn't get to experience the equanimity until that happens, and it shows up in the fourth jhana, but it deepens. It deepens in infinite space, infinite consciousness, nothingness, and neither perception. So what's happening is you have, uh, if in the in the chart that I had with the shape of the half moon, where the part, the story of equanimity was going across from the time you first went in the temple to meet the monk and sit for the first time, and imperturbability, that, that looked like it kind of, that that half moon shape, it looked like this. And over here it said, um, you know, from calm and still and, um, and tranquility, right? That's one of the terms. And then um, the sukha, the sukha is even, the sukha was a kind of a, a, almost a, a level, a little bit more than the tranquility, because it was internal, okay, and then you had collectedness, this is the one I was talking to him about collectedness, the proper amount of collectedness, and then over here was disenchantment, okay, and then um, dispassion, and then what happens is vimudi, and vimudi is the liberation of the mind, and then right after that, it, you know, the, the experience is like here, and then, then you have the what happens afterwards. Okay, so all these pieces here on this line, they correspond, there's not enough room to do this. Um, they correspond with, um, this is like, um, let's see if I can do it, meta. 
I'm gonna, well, I'd say meta, meta in these, I have to look at my chart, but it's meta. And then you have Karuna. Suka. And I would say Mudita is like in here, Mudita. And then you have equanimity. That's happening like about like here. And then it's going deeper and deeper and deeper. This dispassion, the Moody, it's like, um, this is where it hits imperturbability. So I think what you need to do is, uh, if I have that chart, I can send you a picture of it or something so that you can kind of look at it. Okay, and if I if I do that, you know, you'll get you'll get an idea. I have to I have to understand there are levels of equanimity that are deepening and deepening and deepening all the way across to the point where you have nibbana happen. You know, the falling into cessation, and then you're just in the deep. Then when you come out, you come out. Like I like what the person said from Florida. You know, it's like like a newborn baby's brain. And a newborn baby's brain, you know, is just full of this curiosity looking, you know, oh, oh, oh. You know, I have one grandchild when she showed up, immediately had this expression of, I am just delighted to be here. <laughs> this baby had this, this expression on her face of like, oh, I'm so glad I'm out of there and I'm here now. That's wonderful to be here. How am I going to use this teaching to have somebody heal from where they're broken and they're caught in, in severe depression or even, um, you know, addiction or uh, just um, all different types of depressions this applies to, but anything that's going on, severe suffering, and you have this line and where we're going to look at, we have the, um, the six sense doors and then we have contact and then we have feeling. And then what happens with that is conditioned craving can happen with the untrained mind. And then you have clinging. Then you have the birth of action, a reaction of reaction in the untrained mind or action if it's a trained mind. Okay, so let's just look at it that far. Now the person has a problem and the big problem starts here when it starts here, because this is where the I enters. This is where Atta jumps in. This is where you invented I when you liked and wanted and had attachment to get something or you, and that's the baby nursing, definitely. Okay. <laughs> Okay, or you didn't like something, you didn't want it, and you had aversion to it. This is where it happens here in craving. So when I, with craving, these are the conditions running through like this. So they're running like this is how they're building. Okay, and you're going, you want to take them down. Like Perel wants to help them to let go. Okay, so they're building this way, but to defeat them, the reverse recitation on dependent origination hides from you the fact of how they actually heal, in my experience, over the years, how do they heal? They don't go back here and stop and this from happening or try to stop contact, stop feeling. Of course, you don't, you want to because the Eightfold Path, you want to stay in wholesome things. You don't want to expose yourself to see, hear, smell, taste, touch, things that are going to be wrong stuff. All that's true in the, in the virtue side of things. But what I'm talking about is how does the healing actually happen? And this is critical to understand. It happens from back here. It happens here. It goes backwards. And one of my students taught me how it worked. I kept trying to figure out how am I going to help this person? And so what the person did first was he let go of the birth of reaction that was unhealthy for him. He let it go. And at that point, 
at that point, he then had less to deal with, didn't he? He had only the craving clinging, but he's not going to do it again. You take the example of the angry man, the anger management, okay? And the first thing you say, no matter what happens, don't you strike out or strike back. That's this one. So you eliminate, I'm not going to strike back anymore. I forgot one. Wait a second. Oh, geez. How could I do that? This is my habitual thing. Wait a second. I have to, I have to get one more in here. I forgot. Poor little guy. Um, mm -hmm. So right here, yeah, right here is the, um, the habitual tendency. Sorry. I knew I was missing one. The habitual reactions, they live here. And this is Bawa. And what they are is your library of your past reactions, unwholesome reactions. And then you have the birth of the reaction. Okay, now we got it right. Okay. And this one is optional. This is, well, I'll tell you why that's optional in a minute. But the first one he gives up, Okay, the first one he gives up is this one. He does not strike back, does not write. Here, he gives up that. He's not going to, he keeps a diary. He sees every time they, people talk about this, I do, I behave like that. So he said, I'm not going to do that anymore. But then he still feels the pressure inside of the craving, the clinging, habitual tenant reactions. And when he says, I'm not going to do it anymore, if he looks in his diary and he was writing what happened each time, he always did the same thing. There was a relationship here between his reaction and what set him off. Now, this has to do, if you're a psychologist, a psychiatrist, a, um, you know, um, an analyst or something, you're watching for what the person can't see in themselves. You're, you're pointing out, like I call them the person that watches your shadow. You can't see your shadow. And your shadow is that when somebody said this, you always did that. And so the, the, the job of the, of the counselor is to point to, do you realize every time you heard this, you did this? You see that? And they say, oh, when I'm keeping my diary, I see every time I do the same thing. So I'm going to close the library. So that's the second thing they do is they close the library. Now they're going to have craving and clinging left. You see that? Okay. So now yep. when somebody says something, they're going to feel the pressure, the build up into the tension. They're going to pay attention to what's happening. And that tension is, starts to arise. Okay. And they see that it, it turns into a mental proliferation, the mental proliferation. So they're going to stop. They're going to turn off the mental proliferation. They're going to stop the story. So now what do they have left? This is interesting, isn't it? Because now what they have left is what everybody has left, but you can reduce it a lot. They have this left. The eye is still there. They can feel the eye being born. This eye is being born. And I don't like and, and I, I don't want. But they don't go here anymore. This is gone. That's gone. That's gone. This is a big improvement. You see? But what I'm trying to show you is they heal this direction. So in the text, this is left for us to figure out. He didn't give you everything. <laughs> he explains outcomes and stuff. You have to read and find it and keep looking. Do you understand what I'm saying? 